Hello and welcome to We Random episode 31, recording on March 19th, 2021. Um, Brian, I've I've got just uh I've got just two words for you, man. Andy Dalton? <laughs> Almost qualified productions. We're three beers in. Time for you to catch up. Welcome to We Random, episode 31. I'm Brian. That's Christopher. Say hello to the people, Christopher. Hey, what's up, everybody? So, you know that quarterback that everybody in Chicago wanted that has a six-letter last name that ends with O-N, that it totally was Andy Dalton the whole time, wasn't it? I mean, probably. I mean... He still might be the best quarterback that Allen Robinson has played with in his career, which is really sad for Allen Robinson. But now we're going to have that whole uh, Nick Foles, Andy Dalton, shoulder, super showdown. So, but, but did you hear Marcus Mariota may get cut? So maybe oh, God. maybe they're going to add him too. <laughs> they're going to add him too. <laughs> so we'll move away from that. There is a topic on the wheel for NFL free agency. So we may That's true. That's get into true. Uh, where Mitchell Trubisky's new home is and some other things. But today we have our wheel of doom. We don't have a topic of wheels. We have a wheel of topics and the wheel is going to spin and we are going to give our thoughts on any topic that comes up. So before we do that, Christopher, do you have any insights or thoughts about this before we get going? No, man, let's spin it. All right. Well, it's March Madness. It's We Random Madness. Let's do it. Can we say March Madness or are we going to? No, we can like... say that. Fuck them. Uh, <laughs> we're we're going to go with uh, the Milwaukee COVID zip. What's that mean? Like you, you zip up the COVID? What? I don't know what's going on there. So. Starting March 22nd, Milwaukee County residents 18 years or older living in 10 zip codes that house the county's most underserved populations will become eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine regardless of any pre-existing conditions. Health officials say focusing on such groups will help make vaccine distribution more equitable while addressing glaring racial disparities. So vaccination data shows that Milwaukee County's most underserved zip codes also have the lowest vaccination rates for COVID-19. The numbers, 150,000 white individuals in Milwaukee have been vaccinated, while only 25,000 black and 14,000 Hispanic individuals have been vaccinated. So based on that, the zip codes were chosen using the CDC's Social Vulnerability Index, which examines poverty, access to transportation, housing, and other factors. So what are your thoughts on this, Christopher? This is something that I think is really interesting. And there's a quote that I have that I want to read at some point, but give me some thoughts on this before we dive into more quotes and stuff about this. Yeah, I think it's, I think this is a good idea. And I, I, I actually applaud them for doing this. I mean, we've seen a lot of different um, reports and articles and uh, statistics that really point out the way that certain um certain areas of especially large urban areas are that they don't get the care that they need right they don't get the support they don't get the medical care that they need um so i think trying to give those areas of the city kind of a leg up and get them vaccinated at a higher rate i think makes a ton of sense and i think it's a it's a good thing to do i think that the a lot of times that what we're going to see in, in some of these areas is this is where a lot of a lot of people who need to be out and working and doing things, right? We, we, we're calling them essential workers a lot of times now, but this is where a lot of those people are going to be. And yes, a lot of them qualified already, but who knows how many of them may have run into issues. Maybe they couldn't, you know, get things done in their local area. Maybe they didn't have transportation, whatever the case may be. This just opens that door a little bit wider to make sure that all of these individuals get the, the vaccine that they need. Right. And I think they still have some issues to address. Obviously, these communities had lower you know, numbers of vaccination sites and they are more dependent on 
public transportation to get to some of the other hubs like the Wisconsin Center and things Mm -hmm. like that where there are vaccinations. But I also think from a lens of the more individuals in that community that you can get vaccinated, the more trust that that community might have in the vaccination process. And I think that's kind of one of the things that Milwaukee County Executive David Crowley is getting at when he's saying that utilizing the zip code data to expand our vaccine eligibility is a step in the right direction towards serving our underrepresented neighborhoods of color and instilling confidence that they will be treated with equity and respect in the healthcare system. So one of the things that's interesting to me about this is there is data and information for years that you know, minority populations have had poor experiences in healthcare, and there have even been times where, you know, those individuals have been, for lack of a more sensitive term, experimented on in the healthcare system. So getting some of these individuals to be interested in getting the vaccine is a challenge. So the more people that they know that they see who get it may encourage them to say, you know, I'm going to take this step to do it too. So opening it up to that population at large, you're kind of building a consensus between people like, yep, I had it. I am okay. You know, you should do it too. Kind of, it's the whole social construct where like, if you tell me something, I'm going to believe you more than if I just read it on the internet from random Joe Bob, right? Like that kind of thing. Yeah. And I I think that again, because of some of the stuff we've already kind of talked about is um, we know that these these areas have been up, underrepresented and upper under um, underserved for a very long time. There's a lot of uh, distrust in a lot of these areas. So yeah, I think that uh, being able to get it out there, the more that we can get people vaccinated, the more that we can see people aren't dying and they're not getting tracked by Bill Gates, uh, who has much more important things to do than track wherever the fuck you are. Um, more the more that people see that, the more that we're going to see people who are going to jump on board, which is what we need. We need as many people to get vaccinated as possible to uh, to help kind of curb this whole ordeal and 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 just keep people safe, right? Like we don't want people to die, so maybe get right. the shot. Yeah, and especially you know in these communities where it's harder to social distance when your house is super close to this other house or you have, you know, six to eight people living in a residence and things like that. So I think it's a great step. I mean, Milwaukee County has seemingly done some good work, even though it sometimes has felt really disorganized. So, you know, I'm hopeful that this will go well. Yeah, I agree. Cool. Well, look at that. A positive topic to start the podcast. This is the last one you're going to get, Chet. I'm just telling you. I don't know. I mean, I'm not mad about NFL free agency. So. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about that neck beard in Georgia. So we're, we're going way downhill way fast. We're talking about Kyle Orton? What? No. Oh, okay. So we're not talking about Kyle Orton. Son of a... Well, okay. So Robert Long was charged with murder in Georgia. He had four counts of murder for uh, a shooting at Young's Asian Massage, and he's also been charged with murder in Atlanta, where four women were killed in two separate attacks. Of the eight people killed, six were of Asian descent. The other two were white. In describing an interview with Long, Cherokee County Captain Jay Barker said that Long was, quote, pretty much fed up and kind of at the end of his rope. It was a really bad day for him, and this is what he did. Baker says that Long, quote, apparently has an issue, what he considers a sex addiction, and sees these locations as a temptation for him that he wanted to eliminate, and that the killings were not racially motivated. Okay, can I, can I, I'm going to butt in. This this is the summary. Some fucking idiot little kid, white boy, got pissed off, and he shot a whole bunch of people. He shot eight people. He killed, or he killed eight people. Six of them were, were they all Asian women, or six, six of them were Asian, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like that's, that's the story. Right. And the guy says he has a sex addiction uh, addiction. Like, I don't know what the fuck that has to do with salon parlors. Uh, he says it's not racially motivated, but yet somehow a large portion of the people are Asian. Uh, like that's the story, like the rest of it. Fuck it. We can cover the rest of it later, but that's the story. This guy's a fucking jackal who, you know, he's just a fucking jackal. That's it. That's the summary. That's the story. What do you think B? Well, I mean, that's the story, but I think the framing of the story is also important, right? Because a lot of people objected to the way that the police framed this story and kind of framed it like, well, he had this sexual addiction and he wants to eliminate the 
temptation by apparently deciding to murder Asian women, right? Like, and that's, I think, where people are. That's a, that's a different story, though, right? Like, that's not, like, like, there's different stories here, right? One story is some jackhole got a fucking wild hair up his ass and shot a bunch of people. Right. And then another story is why the fuck did he shoot these people? And, and, and there certainly seems to be a race angle to it. Then another story right. is the fucking jackhole cops who said, oh, he had a bad day. Well, you know what? And this is a riff off a tweet I saw too. I had a bad fucking day today too. You know what I did? I made a really good dinner and I ate that shit. And that's why we were a little bit late starting the podcast. I sure as fuck didn't go shoot a bunch of people. Okay. Right. And, and this is the quote, one of, this is something that I put in that I want to read because I feel like this really kind of encapsulates some of my thoughts on this. So Kenyette Barnes, an Atlanta human rights activist, says, we have a difficult time in this society calling out white privilege and white supremacist violence. We are socialized to believe that violence comes from the others and that if it does happen to come from white American people, especially white American men, then there has to be a mitigating factor. And in this case, it's sex addiction. Well, you know what? There's a lot of people with sex addictions and they're not killing Asian women. So I don't buy it. Yeah, for so, sure. I mean, it's never, I think, it's never black and white to use a horrible phrase, right? It's, it's never black and white. It's, it's very, very, very rarely. I won't say never, but it's very, very, very rarely one single thing that, that led to whatever it is that happened. And that's any crime, right? Like it's very rarely just one thing. It's, it's this culmination of stuff that kind of points you in that direction. I mean, my whole thing about this is I really liked that quote because it gets to the heart of the matter is that we as a society, and I'm going to steal this from Trevor Noah because he put out a video that kind of said the same thing, but we as a society always look at the symptoms and not the disease because we could see things like this coming, but we choose not to. We are like, oh, well, this person, you know, went and shot a school, but it's because they were depressed. This person went and did this because it was that. This person may have had a gun on his, you know, passenger seat, and that's why it's okay that he got shot seven times, right? Like, these are the things that we're doing, and we're just making these excuses instead of addressing what some of these problems are. The problems are the fact that we are making excuses. The problem is the fact that we don't necessarily have responsible gun ownership, you know, things. We're not addressing that as an issue or a challenge. Like there are so many things that we ignore and we just spin them to whatever narrative the people in charge or the people in power want the narrative to be. Well, here's the thing. The problem is never, ever, ever going to be the guns. Because there's too much money there and too many people are bought in Congress. The problem is never, ever, ever going to be white guys. Because everyone in fucking Congress is an old white guy, right? Those are just never going to be the problem. Now, I'm not saying they aren't the problem, but they're never going to be the problem. You get, you get my drift? It's like nobody's ever going to point to that. And that ties directly to your quote, right? Like, uh, like as, as, soon as, as soon as the picture came out of this guy, I said, well, of course he's a fucking white guy who looks like a piece of trash. Like... Of course, like that, that's, those are the people that do this shit. Like, that's just how it works. So let's just fucking say we need to, we need to pay attention to some of these big things. It's never going to happen, right? Racism in, is running fucking rampant in this country. We're not doing anything about it. Very little at least. People at the top don't care. They like it when racism runs wild because it allows them to keep things separated the way that they want. They can keep getting voted into office and selling themselves off to the gun companies and making millions of dollars. It's, this is the system we're in folks. So I'm kind of throwing my hands up. I know I shouldn't. I know I should fight, but that's kind of where we're at. And I'm, I'm just, I'm fucking sick and tired of these goddamn people who are going out there shooting people up because of whatever stupid goddamn reason they have. I'm just, I'm fucking done with it. Right. And that's the part about it that is frustrating. It's that we can see these things coming. We know that if you add two plus two, that's going to equal four, but we're not doing anything about it because then all of a sudden you're taking away people's rights and you're making poor assumptions and all of these things. But it's like, we can't, again, blame the symptom. We have to also treat the disease. The disease is the fact that there are people who have been empowered for generations and centuries to feel like they are superior to other people. Until we address that, all of these symptoms will continue to occur. 
Well, I don't think that's the problem, but it's definitely one of the problems. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's kind of a root cause issue, right? It's like it it's kind of like, you know, I don't even want to go down that road because I'm not a medical expert, but it's like, if you have, and I was going to use diabetes as an example, but it's like, if you have high blood sugar and you're, you know, not doing whatever is supposed to happen, it's like, you're just going to keep having it. Right. Like, but we don't address that. We say, well, it's okay because you're a person and you can decide to eat what you want. Right. Like that's basically what we do. Sure. I don't know. I, I like I said, I don't want to get into a big old. That's what we do. That's what, that's what we do here. Let's get into it. Well, I mean, it, like you said, there's nothing that is going to come from a you know argument about because I feel like we agree that we know what it is. It's not changing, and we have to figure out what we can do to advocate for ourselves to at least feel like we're doing something. So, what do we do? How do we do that? by having these conversations and, you know, putting our opinions out there and trying to continue to advocate for these populations that are being marginalized. Okay. Is there anything else that we can do outside of this forum? I mean, that's what I'm just saying in general. Like if we see it, we have to acknowledge it and we have to be active participants in not being complicit to when these things happen. Yeah. And I think, I think I would take it one step further, right? Is it's not okay to not be racist. It is important and it is vital to be actively anti-racist. And I think that's, I think that's a lot of what we do on this, this podcast, right? Is, is we are advocating and we're very, very, very loudly, I would like to say, especially me, uh, you know, it's kind of screaming from the rafters metaphorically that, uh, you know, this isn't okay and we need to open our eyes to this. And, and that's part of the reason why we bring these topics up into the podcast is because, you know, this, this podcast doesn't have an enormous viewership, but, you know, as it gets out there into the airways, if it, if it gets one person to start to think about things or one person who says, oh, I didn't even hear about that. Let me, let me look into it. Let me talk to someone about it. As long as we're opening eyes, even just a little bit, that's the point, right? That's, that's specifically being anti-racist is, is putting these, these, messages out there in the world not only in this forum but wherever else on twitter on facebook etc when when shit's blowing up and you're seeing this stuff come out speak out about it maybe stay away from the facebook forums because they're pretty fucking awful but maybe that's exactly where you need to go like i go in there every now and then sometimes it's to poke the bear but sometimes it's to bring a real rational argument which is normally wasted because people are fucking idiots on there but being 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 forward with it, not just sitting back and being reactionary, but actually pushing forward and saying, look, I want to make sure people hear this. I want to make sure people know about this. I want to make sure people hear me speaking out about it. That That's the super, super important part. And I think we do that to a degree here. And I just think it's important that us and everybody else that's out there, especially those that have that same mindset, we, we need to make sure we're doing that, going that extra step whenever we get the opportunity to. Right. And I think that's where kind of with this, like we initially had conversations earlier this week, like we need to let this information play out before we like, you know, go off on it. But I think as the information has come out, I definitely feel like at minimum, these individuals were targeted because this guy was saying that these specific people were a threat to him or whatever. And like that in itself is just asinine that somebody can have that mentality to be like, nope, you know, I'm better than all these people. So I just need to eliminate them. Yeah. That's a fucking idiot. Just, so. call, just call it what it is. You guys are fucking idiot. I, I, yeah. And I'm, like, I, that's the part that really just gets me all riled up is there are people that are defending this guy. Like, yeah, like, you know, this, this thing is not right. And I'm like, really? Like, that's where I get frustrated because there are people who honestly believe that, you know, it's okay for us to, you know, kill people because we want to have sex with them and they won't have sex with us. You're literally seeing people say this? Yes. Who the fuck are these people? We need to bring them on the show or just send me their name. <laughs> I'll give them a fucking call. Someone needs to talk to these fuckers. But like, that's, that's the problem is that people are now so empowered by things that have happened over the past one year, two years, three years, five years, even maybe 10 years, who knows? They're so empowered that these are things that honestly people have 
always thought, right? Like yeah. we know that there's a diversity of language, a diversity of thought, but for a while, these were things where we, as a society, were like, hey, that's kind of crossing a line. But now, apparently, it's okay again to just be that way. And yeah. I think that's what I want to push back on. Yeah. No, I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm sick and tired of having to talk about this shit all the time. Yeah. Same. That's just where I'm at. Yep. I'm spinning this wheel, man. Cool. Let's get something happy about the Vatican. Fuck the Vatican. Let me, you know what? <laughs> oh, God, it's going to get worse for you. <laughs> Jeff, if you're listening, you better skip forward like five minutes or something. Jeff, you may as well just turn this podcast off right now. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm glad that you've downloaded or subscribed or listened, but you just need to be done. And uh, the reason that yeah. you need to be done, Jeff, is that the Vatican says that the Catholic Church will not bless same-sex unions, a decision that threatens to widen the chasm between the church and the LGBTQ community. Pope Francis, who has frequently been praised for his welcoming tone towards the LGBTQ community, has approved the statement. The statement says that gay and lesbian individuals may receive a blessing if they live according to the church teachings, but blessing same-sex unions would send a sign that the Catholic Church approves and encourages, quote, a choice and a way of life that cannot be recognized as objectively ordered to the revealed plans of God. So, Christopher, um, I know you really like to talk about the church, so give me what you got on this one. So, I, I know, I know that the church, really, the, the way that the church, the, the reason that the church could be as successful as it is, is because there's a lot of stupid people in the world. I understand that. There's a lot of gullible people that need, they need that structure, you know, they like their cult, that's fine, I get it, perfect, fine. But I at least thought the people that were running the church had some fucking brains, but apparently that's not the case. Let me dive into why I'm saying that. So what you're saying is on this statement is you're saying, this is what, you, this is your words. If you are a gay person, you can come to church. You can come to church. And if you're doing the regular church stuff, we're here for you. We're going to support you. But if you want to spend your life with another gay person, well, hold the fuck on. You can't do that because if we support that, well, now all of a sudden we're supporting a choice in your life not being followed by God, whatever the fuck they said, right? You're living against God. Well, this motherfucker was living against God when they were just a gay person before they wanted to get together. Like, what? The, like at least be consistent if you're going to be fucking stupid, right? But they're not even consistent for God's sake. Like, what the fuck are they talking about? And, you know, I never had much of an issue with the Pope. I never really gave a shit about the Pope, to be honest. But, like, this Pope had done a lot of progressive things. I was actually kind of a fan of some of the stuff he did. And the fact that he's behind this, well, fuck him now, too. Like, this whole, God, I fucking hate the church. And this is just one more fucking reason why. I mean, I feel like some of this is always back to your, like, winning thing, right? Because what they're saying here is they're trying to placate their base, but they're also saying, well, the negative judgment does not mean that we're judging people. Yes, you are judging people because, you know, at the end of the day, what do people say? Oh, you're a sinner and you're going to hell. That sounds like a judgment to me. Like, am, am I wrong? Am I interpreting that incorrectly? Well, well, well here's, here's where my mind goes. And, and I'm sure there's a lot of people that would disagree with me here. But if, if gay people are coming to your church, you allow them to come to your church. So, so, so at that point, you're supporting them as a gay person. That is perfectly fine. Wanting to get into a, a normal... Normal probably isn't the right term, but, but to get into a committed relationship with someone that they want to spend their lives with, that's not okay. Now, there's a comment there about priests and little boys and their, the, the way that they like to have unusual relationships with people. I'm not even going there yet. I might. But, but it seems to me like they're okay having butts in the seats. They just don't want to bless people, which t tells me, you're going to love this one, that they just want your motherfucking money, right? Because they pass that fucking plate around all day Sunday and they want you to put your money in there. They don't even fucking get taxed on that shit in this country, so don't even get me started there. So, yeah, this is about give me your money. 
but we don't want to take a stance on anything. They want to make everybody happy and they're not. Now they're going to piss off a bunch more people. Now, personally, I say, fuck the church. Don't go to church anyway. And I'm not really all that big on marriage. So, you know, just hang out together. You don't even have to do the civil union thing. That's, that's what I say. But, you know, some people like that stuff. So be it. Well, and one of the things that I think they're using kind of as a crutch, so to speak, is like, well, if someone has those feelings, they can come and repent about how they're feeling about their sexuality. Fuck out of here. And like, that's just, again, like, it's, it's just like people's brains make my brain hurt i guess that's the Here, here's way. the thing like i don't i don't have a problem with people who want to be that, that have faith right if, right if if people are faithful if they if they you know are spiritual i have no problem with that i have a problem with the church i have a problem with the way that religion takes a belief and has made like this structure around it um i i, I hate the fact that they are so buried in their old school beliefs and they don't have the ability to evolve um i'm this is another example uh i i just there's so much about the structure of that that i just can't stand and you know what if people want to be in that cult and that's fine and, and and i say that with not even me being fucking divisive and hating the church it's a fucking cult right if people want to be a part of that that's fine as long as you're not hurting other people now this is hurting other people and Part of the part of my issue is if if churches are sanctioned by the state, which they kind of are, right? They don't have to pay taxes, so they're getting this huge tax break. Then they should have to cater to everybody, right? Shouldn't shouldn't they have to? Are they allowed to just say gay people can't come into here? I mean, that's that's kind of bullshit to me. I can make them pay taxes, make them a private organization, then I care a little bit less. Well, and the biggest thing, I I really feel like there's a lot of kind of double standard, right? Because a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, everyone was made in God's image. And because you're made in God's image, you are perfect to God. But then we say, but this, 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 and that about you is not acceptable. Like, it, we can't have it both ways. And I think that's part of the frustration here. And I know no, that's, that's, a, that's a church, man. That's religion. That's how it works. Right. But like, that's kind of one of the things that like old man Wiggum is saying, if no one sin is greater than another, and we as people are not to judge because that is what God is there to do. Why are we judging? But that's exactly what we do. That's the so. church, man. That's religion. That's how it works. Like there's a, what is it like a 4,000 page book that some guy in the street wrote? Nobody even knows who the fuck it is. But they, they revere this. This is the word of God. No, it's not. It's the word of, you know, Joe Bob who's sitting on the fucking street you know, smoking his pipe, but there's like 4,000 pages here. And what they do is they'll, they'll look at like 112 pages and say, this is the stuff that really makes sense. This is the stuff that matters, but the rest of it is garbage. And then we don't believe that. No, fuck you. If you were going to look at this and say that this is the word of God, then don't you have to listen to the whole fucking thing? Like you can't pick and choose. Right. I mean, Am I wrong? I mean, you're right, but can we, based on the fact that we can't get someone to read a 280 character tweet i don't know that we can actively expect them to read a four thousand page well, book. and that's the problem because now you've got people who are not reading a four thousand or whatever page book and they are impacting the lives of others one way or another yep. whether it's rules of the church is setting or people who use their religion to um to justify their hatred or just you know the the um, bigotry against other people whether it's LGBTQ or someone else, you know, people are using the, the, the abortion thing. We could bring that up. That's a, that's a big religion thing. There's all these different things that tie into religion. People use their religion as an excuse, as a reason, I'm going to say excuse, for why they have these beliefs and things. And yet they, they, it's not even a true belief system because they only pick and choose what they want to do. Um, I, I think that, you know, we just had the big conversation about bigotry and racism. And I, I honestly, and don't get me wrong, not everybody's here. You know, some people are 100% devoted and, and they're, they're using religion and faith as their way towards a better life. And I'm fine with that. But a lot of people pick and choose and they use it as a way to justify the, the, the beliefs and the thoughts of where they already are, right? Just like mm -hmm. some people will, right. will, will use, you know, racist innuendo or whatever, like with Trump. We talked about Trump and spouting all this, you know, white power and, and at least hinting at all this white supremacy shit. People, there's a reason why white supremacy, and this may show up in one of these stories, is through the roof. Why we're seeing propaganda everywhere, where we're seeing it blow up online. Now, part of it is because it's always been here, but a big part of it is because it's been okay, because they've got justification. 
And that's what a lot of this is. And that's why it's pissing me the fuck off because now all you're doing, the church is what they're doing is they're putting a great big sign up that says, hey, we're not okay with LGBTQ people anymore. We, we don't want them around. That's what this is. That's what people are going to take from this. And that's yep. incredibly unfortunate. Yep. Well, let's move on and see if we can get another topic that will probably be something. You know, I came into this week ago. saying, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to stay calm. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to swear as much. And then we get this shit. Now we got this Oklahoma announcer guy. <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ. No. This is, can I like mark this as triple mature? Cause I think it's going to have to be triple mature. Yeah. All right. Well, Matt Rowan, an announcer on the NFHS network, was caught on a live microphone directing highly inflammatory and racist comments towards the Norman, Oklahoma girls basketball team ahead of its quarterfinal matchup with Midwest City. Norman's team kneeled in unity during the national anthem, at which point Rowan was heard saying, quote, they're kneeling, blank, blank. I hope they get their ass kicked, blank them. I hope they lose. They're going to kneel like that. Hell no. So, you know what really kind of ticked me off about this one, Christopher? Everything? This particular part. Because I'm not surprised that someone in Oklahoma is racist. I'm sorry, but I'm not. But sure. in a statement where he apologized, he blamed a spiking blood sugar for the incident. While hmm. not excusing my remarks, it is not unusual when my sugar spikes that I become so disoriented and often say things that are not appropriate as well as hurtful. I do not believe that I would have made such horrible statements absent my sugar spiking. And to that, I say, you are full of shit because, you know, hyperglycemic racism, I don't think is a thing. I've been out of counseling school since 2007, but I don't think that if I went and got the uh, you know, DSM, that would be in there. Yeah, the, I, you know, it's bad enough that this, and, and I'm just, I'm just going to call it straight chat. You know, I don't pull punches, right? It's bad enough that this guy is a racist piece of shit. That, that's bad enough. Like, like full stop. Right there, you're an asshole, you're a piece of shit, you're done. Good call. Good call, William Random. Dick. Dick. Of the week, there's a lot of dicks of the week, but Pope, we could talk about the Pope again. The wee random dick, dick, dick. of the week. I, I think, feel like and, we need and, to play that for everything except for the Milwaukee County COVID. Andrew, Andrew Cuomo's on the, the list. Wee random, yeah, we we'll got him on there. Uh, what week. else we got? Oh yeah, the Georgia shooting guy. We can the add him onto there. Yeah. Dick. And Fox then, uh, News. The Gen Fox X. News. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I could just play this all fucking name. Anyway, what were we even talking about? Oh yeah, Oklahoma guy. <laughs> so Oklahoma it's, guy. It's bad enough that this guy's a racist piece of shit, right? But then to try, then then he's basically throwing all diabetics under the under the bus, right? And and right. he's making this shit up. Like, there's sure maybe your blood sugar causes you to to be a bit of an idiot, but you're not going to just instantly pull like racist remarks completely out. like it would be like me going to a basketball game and saying oh my blood sugar got high and all of a sudden i started swearing and okay swearing i would do but i started calling people the n-word and the you know calling right. gay people the f-word and all like i'm not going to do that it doesn't matter what my blood sugar does it doesn't matter how drunk i am it's not going to happen like it's right. just a and stupid it, ass fucking excuse it is and the thing about it is it's like Typically, if your sugar spikes, you're going to be talking nonsensically. You're not going to be able to string together a coherent sentence of racism. Yeah, th this is this is just such fucking trash. And thankfully, as I, I was reading through uh, either this article or one that was a follow-up, it might have been this one. Um, so basically, this guy, oh, I don't even know where the article's at. Where's it at? This guy, he like owns a... Uh, um, like like a, a, streaming, a service. streaming service. Yeah, so he's not like just an announcer. He owns the fucking service, and he had this. He had an um, an agreement with the um, like the the overall Oklahoma school. I don't know if it was a local school district, but some big district where he was. His company was the one that is uh, that was announcing and broadcasting all these games. So not only is he a racist piece of shit that hopefully will cost him, you know, a bunch of stuff in the future. But uh, but it's it's they're they're not using him anymore, so he lost this contract. I mean, this is, you would think is a huge contract for just about anybody. So good for him. But there was there was another thing that I was I'm going to see if I can find it because there was a quote as I saw this, and i I should just let you. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, so the mayor had asked one of the parents of one of the children, one of the girls who was targeted, "How is your daughter doing?" 
And I'm probably going to tear up just saying this like I did when I first read it. Her response, her response was, this is why we kneel, because there's a problem. These brave young women aren't afraid to address it and call it out when they see it. They're the real heroes in this situation. Yeah. I don't, now, do you I want the happy ending better. here? Do you want the happy ending here? Sure. The team actually went on to win their 6A state championship. Good for so, them. after all of this, the team, you know, went through all the press and adversity, adversity and they still won their championship. So, Good I think them. that's really cool. Yeah. And it, it, it's sad that, uh, you know, these 15, 16, 17 year old girls are, are standing up and, and helping push through a change with when they, we got these fucking assholes like dude on there. It's the, that's the kind of thing that gives me hope, you know, is, is that there's a lot of young people that are pushing this charge forward. Um, and they're going to be doing that long after I'm gone next week or whenever that happens. So, yeah. So, All yeah. right. So, so we are getting close here to where we're going to want to go to challenge flag time. I've got an idea of something that I might want to throw the challenge flag on. And I also don't know if we actually started recording in our recording app as I'm looking for the timestamp. But um, do you have anything in particular that you would want to throw your challenge flag on before I throw my challenge? Flag? Uh, first of all, Wiggum, it looks like it's Norman, Oklahoma was the... Uh... The girls' basketball team. Yep. Uh, let's see what's on the topics. Let me see if I want to call anything out. Um, I mean, there is that WAP thing. I don't know what all that's about. No, I know what that's about. Uh, I don't. I don't like. I could call out Ron Johnson for being a fucking piece of shit, but yeah, I've, see, I've, I w- I've called out I a lot of go- people as a piece wanna- of shit. I want to go with the WAP because while we're going to get mad about it, I kind of have a little bit of a spin that I want to take on it. All right. Show us your WAP or whatever it is. All right. So we are going to talk about the Grammys. So (laughs) do people actually watch the fucking Grammys? Apparently a lot of people did because at the, at the 2021 Grammy awards, Cardi B and Megan the stallion performed the song WAP. Several people have come out to condemn the erotic nature of the performance that saw the two artists grinding on each other and simulating sex on a giant prop bed. John Cooper of Christian rock band Skillet is the latest to voice an opinion. Cooper says, quote, we're living in a world right now where there are certain Dr. Seuss books that you cannot sell on eBay. They are too much for anybody to even be allowed to buy. It's too evil. But you can and must applaud the sexual degradation of Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion simulating sex together on the Grammys. This is the perfect example. You must celebrate it. In fact, if you don't celebrate it, then you're actually a bad person and you (laughs) don't love people. Cooper then decided to compare what's going on right now to Hitler. Cooper says, the question is, who is going to define what is good and who is going to define what is evil? Every dictator in history says that what they were doing was good. That's what they believe. If you go back and read some of Hitler's speeches, he's like, I'm going to set people free, free from the bondage of the Ten Commandments. In his mind, he's a liberator. It's always like that, you guys. All you do is you redefine evil and you redefine good. That's what's happening right now on the Grammys. Cooper (laughs) later came out to say this was misinterpreted. Now, as I'm thinking about this song, right, and... My, I, I'll be honest, I don't get it, right? Like, I'm not all about the song. But what I do see here is I see a really big double standard. Because if you read the lyrics of the song, obviously, yes, they're using, you know, the N-word because that's kind of a cultural thing. And that's a whole other topic that we don't need to get into. But in that song, they're basically talking about sex, right? And having sex with people and what kind Let's of sex they want to talk about sex, have. baby. Right. And what kind of sex they want to have. They're not, you know, throwing out racial slurs towards white people or Asian individuals or anybody. They're talking about wanting to have sex. But people are trying to equate that to the Dr. Seuss book that talks about Asian individuals having their eyes at a slant, right? We are comparing apples and oranges here. And I think there's a lot of things that are interesting here because is it a trying to sexually repress women thing? 
is it a race thing? Is it a both thing? Because what would happen if this were, you know, Lady Gaga, somebody who is identified as white that was singing the song? Would that make it different or would people still be mad? Like these, th this has a lot of layers. And it also comes back to that layer of like the church. Like we were talking about how the church wants women to be like these very like noble and like they can't talk about having sexual identities or wanting to have sex or wanting to do anything other than make a baby for a man and like these are things that are just bad for people so you're trying to tell somebody that they can't have their identity but it's okay for somebody else to assign an identity to them like that's what pisses me off about this what are your thoughts about that christopher can can I ask a question? You may. What kind of rock band is this guy in? He is in a Christian rock band. I I mean, I rest my case, Your Honor. I mean, what the fuck else do I have to say? So, well, and, I, I'm going to take. It's I'm not just take, him, though. I'm, I'm it's gonna, not just him. I'm going to take. Well, he's the one that you called out. So I'm I'm going to take umbrage with one thing you said. I do not think we're comparing apples to oranges. I think we're comparing apples to garage door openers. Like they are not even in the same fucking universe at this point, right? Like, so so what? Somebody's gonna watch Cardi B and, and Megan the Stallion perform and they're gonna like go get some nookie. Whereas instead we've got books that are teaching people that Asian people aren't on the same level as you. I don't know what might happen there. Maybe we can ask some neckbeard in Georgia what might happen. I mean, give me a fucking break. How are you putting these in the same fucking category? This is insane. Like, I don't know who this John Cooper guy is. Uh, I do think it was really funny that somebody called him out as being a dime store, whatever. Like, there's a guy he looks like, the guy who sings from like 30 Seconds to Mars or whatever, plays the Joker, whatever he is. He's like, yeah, he's a dime store or whatever that guy is. It was pretty funny. And it would have been funnier if I could remember the dude's name because he kind of looks like that. I, I, don't, I don't know that I have anything more to say. I mean, it's, I get it. Like, you, maybe you don't want your kids to, to watch Cardi B you know, and, and how she was acting on this, in this show, like, isn't it kind of up to you to monitor that? Like if you knew she was singing this song, like, I think everybody knows what the hell WAP stands for. So Jared Leto, thank you. Yes. Dime store, Jared Leto. If you see his picture, you would laugh because he totally is. Um, like we know what WP, WAP stands for. What the fuck did we think it was going to be a, like a fucking Taylor Swift with rainbows and unicorns fucking performance. Like, give me a goddamn break. Like you should have well, known what to expect. That's on you. That's not on them. But, and that's the part that frustrates me because this all gets back to that like censorship part, right? Because people are like, well, it's not okay for you to censor racist content, but it's okay for you to want to censor people's sexuality, right? And like, I'm not okay with that. But it's the same kind of thing, right? Just like we talked about in the 4,000 page book, you pick the right. pieces that apply to you and you say the fuck with everything else. It's the same kind of thing. Right. And that's that's why I wanted to talk about this, because it's one of those things where we're going back to putting people in boxes and we're also looking at back to Georgia guy. This is a view of this majority. The majority wants women and especially women of color to stay in this box that they want them to be in. And when they're not in that box, they get all hot and bothered about it. Yep. And that is the problem. That is the disease that we as a society refuse to fight, and we need to start fighting the disease and not the symptoms. Yeah, there, 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 there's, a lot of, there's a lot of disease out there um, that needs to be fought against, but this is certainly one of them. And again, it's just people, like you said, people are in their own little box. They only care about what's in that little, their, their own little box. And, you know, the fact that people like to make these comparisons that have no basis in fact whatsoever right like it's st like racial stereotypes and and an over per perhaps i didn't see the performance or perhaps an over sexualized performance are not the same thing they're, they're, no. they're just not the same thing they're not on the same level now if if you think that that shouldn't be there then fine you can you know speak your voice and whatever and say hey i didn't think i didn't appreciate this my kid was watching it with me or i don't like like I would probably feel uncomfortable if I was watching it. I'm guessing. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't seen it. Like, I may not want to watch that, but I can turn the fucking channel. Right. Or if and I you... want to raise it up and say, hey, I, I don't think I want to make sure that I, 
like when people were fighting about the Janet Jackson thing. If, if that's your thing and you want to fight about it, great. Get up there, fight about it, and scream about it. But don't make this comparison. And sure as fuck, don't compare it to Hitler. Like, that's where he went way the fuck off the deep end. Yeah, don't compare it to Hitler. Don't compare it to Dr. Seuss because they're two very different things. Yeah. Because like you said, it's like, okay, somebody looks at this song and they're like, hey, I want to have some of that. Okay. Right. If somebody looks at Dr. those books and says, yeah, I want to do some of that. Like, those are two very different outcomes. Yeah. And, and I mean, to be fair, they're... Well, and I'm not going to even touch on George, a guy who says he's got a sex edition. Fuck that guy. But there are people that do really stupid, crazy things when they get attached to things, right? Like, you know, there are people who are addicted to sex. There are people who, you know, end up stalkers. So, there, yeah, sure, maybe. But is that on them as the performers that did that? Or is that on the person who has a fucking issue? I think it's more on the person who has the issue, right? I just think it's a different situation. So... It's another, it's another sad, sad song. But you know what time it is, Christopher? I think that it is time for Random Rankings. It is time for Random Rankings. And we are going to continue working our way through the Snacklet uh, bracket. So last week, we did the dip. Yep, did the dip. The dip, dip, dip. So in the dip division, hummus and pita bread was our final four entrant. This week, we get to see in the dish region who our final four entrant is. And time pending, we may move on, but I'm guessing we won't. So we're going to start with the dish region. Now, we've got rules. There are two rules. Rule number one, if Skanzi and I agree, that item moves on. If Skanzi and I disagree, those individuals who are in the live chat here on Twitch get to decide which item will move on. All right. I like it. You ready to start? Let's do it. I am ready to start once we got this pulled up. Oh, right. look at you. Yeah, I'm, I'm on right. top of it, bro. All, All right, right. So, so we're going to start off with the number one versus the number 16. We've got ice. Is this even like, we, no. I don't even feel like we need to spend I'm, time I'm just on highlighting this. it. It's ice cream and brownie. Come on. Yeah, ice cream and brownie it is. We I change the color on this thing. Show edit tools. Change the color. I'm going to change the color. I mean, honestly, I would have taken grainy mustard over blue cheese. Let's just be honest. <laughs> That's fair, yeah. Ice cream so, has to win that one, guys. We're not even, even going to throw that one out there. This yeah, one, however, we've got strawberries and whipped cream. We've got fresh berries and pound cake. Can we take Ooh. both of them? Because that's basically like strawberry shortcake right there between the two of them. Right. But apparently you have to choose the berries and the pound cake or the berries and whipped cream. But so you I need think... whipped cream with the berries and the pound cake. Technically you don't though. Because oh, no, you if do. the... Well, I mean, you want it, right? But if the berries have enough juice, then it's okay. That's true. That's true. Okay. I can go with so... berries and pound cake with the fruit or with the juice. So... So that's that's where I'm going because a lot of times when you do the fresh berries, you got kind of that juice, and then the juice you kind of pour the juice over, and yeah. that's kind of how you do it. That's that's tough. That, that one's tough, but uh, but I'm gonna go with you. I'm gonna go with berries and pound cake. Kind of like the right. idea of some strawberries, some raspberries, some blackberries, and you just kind of uh, I'm gonna make that hand gesture that sounds that looks horrible uh, when you you mash it up. <laughs> you do you got some the of shake that? weight going on. Yeah, you do some of that, mash it up. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> are you watching me on the video? I am. Yeah, I'm getting it done, Chad. Cereal uh, of choice. What? I don't feel like that's really fair. A cereal of choice and soft serve vanilla or cornbread and honey. Ooh. I mean, are you, are we doing dessert or are we doing not dessert? Because they're both really good. I mean, I don't know that I've ever done a cereal of choice with vanilla, but. Yeah, well, I was just going to kind of cheat and say like Oreo cereal huh is oreo cereal a thing i don't know let's pretend because <laughs> i feel like we do have to agree on a cereal we can't just like keep changing it. oh okay let's see oreo breakfast cereal look at right there man it's a thing i can pick it up today and pick and save it says or somewhere target all right, if you give me Oreo breakfast cereal and soft serve vanilla, I'll go with you. There's oatmeal cream pie cereal. There's churro cereal. I mean, I, I, 
Yeah, I think I think I got to go with this one. All right, let's do it. So we're going with oatmeal or not oatmeal? <laughs> not but, oatmeal. Uh, Fuck oatmeal. Oreos. But Oreos. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I would pick. We just cornbread. have to remember that cornbread. You, you know. I'm I've high. never done cornbread and honey, but it sounds interesting. It would be amazing. I think I think the problem is I just ate a super huge dinner. So I'm thinking dessert right now. I'm not even thinking about savory That's stuff. That's fair. That's fair. All, All right, right. We got so, apples and cheese or the winner, ice cream and root beer. Yeah, ice cream and root beer. Yeah, I that's don't a know hands how down. I, like, how is that a 13 like, seed, man? I don't know. I don't. Apples and cheese is kind of like some strange, okay. pretentious, I mean, like. Well, it's like a yeah. charcuterie board or whatever it is. Yeah. That's not bad. Oh, okay. We're agreeing well, on everything, chat. I'm sorry. We're, 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 we're like. You went with apples and cheese? What? <laughs> you both went with apples and cheese? What the hell is happening, Chet? Wiggum probably doesn't like root beer. Oh, probably. <laughs> All right, yogurt and granola, melon and prosciutto? What? So that's basically, again, fruit and cheese or yogurt and granola. Well, prosciutto is uh, ham, basically. Oh, it's, okay. Well, that's fine. But, yeah, I think granola and, and yogurt for me. Emily hates root beer. Okay, that makes sense. Ah. I'm going yogurt I mean, and granola B. All right. Neither of these is really interesting to me, so I'll go with you, yogurt and granola. All right. So we're agreed again. Chat, I'm I, open to what you think. I don't know. what Like, what melon would you want with prosciutto? I just don't. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Emily agrees yogurt and granola. Yeah, I think that's the winner. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Provolone and spicy cured deli meat of choice. Or watermelon and feta cheese. What? What? Who the fuck <laughs> eats watermelon with feta cheese? Uh, I love watermelon, and I definitely do not eat it with feta cheese. Like, this isn't even a competition. The, the provolone with spicy deli meat, like, that should be a number one seed, man. Like, some <laughs> provolone cheese with, like, a big-ass fucking, like, cured sausage. I'll do more of this just because I'm talking about sausage. Uh <laughs> Provolone right, cool. and yeah, meat has to be the winner. All right. All right. I didn't even register my vote, but I was, you know, I was going to go with you. So it's fine. well, yeah, I figured you had to. Like, there's not even a choice there. I feel like some of these really dumb ones. I need. To, I want to try. Like, I want to try watermelon and feta cheese just for the fuck of it. See what it's like. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. We got crackers and cheese, pickles and cheese cubes. There's a shitload of cheese here. I mean, it is the dish bracket. I guess. I don't know exactly what that means. But all right, crackers and cheese, pickles and cheese cubes. Again, I think this uh, is like this, like 90% of this bracket is a charcuterie board that they just like split up into different pairings. I think so. I'm going to go with, um, so basically this is like, do you want carbs or not, right? Like, do you want yeah. crackers is essentially what this comes down to. I'm doing. I'm. Try, I'm kind of trying to cut out carbs, so I think I'm going with the pickles, man. See, I'm going to go with the carbs, so I'll go crackers and cheese. Oh, so all right, the, uh, and so you win because Emily and the old man Wiggum agree with you. So, all right, I'll just eat the cheese. So you guys can have my crackers. Um, good. I don't know what takis are, and but tater tots and melted cheese. I mean, do we have to vote on this? I know I just said I'm getting rid of the carbs, but I mean tater tots and melted cheese, right? I feel like tater tots and melted tea cheese should be a one C. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I think right, takis so are those little like uh, like Latin kind of snacks. I think maybe okay. I'm not sure. Well, sorry, fifteen seed. We are going with tater tots. Yeah, tots is tots is a big time winner there. All right. All right how so did I, I think... put uh, how did I put names on here when I was writing it out? This sign. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh no, don't. What is that? Oh, I don't want to add a signature. I'll we'll just put a fucking name in there. There we go. Uh, you know what? We know what it is. We don't have to write them all down. So ice cream versus ice cream and brownie versus berries and pound cake. I think I think we're on the. Uh, yep. We're yeah, on the we're ice there. cream, right? Um, I mean, this is an interesting matchup, oh. right? Like, I, I think both of them are good. You're going ice cream. I'm going ice cream. All right, I'll I'll, I'll come with you. Okay. I mean, because I'm ice cream and brownie, man. I just think that doesn't get much better. See, I know you also love fresh fruit, though. So that's why I, I do. Was I do. Eat, so. I don't really care for pound cake, though. Okay. I, I've had pound cake only a couple times. I didn't like it. Like, if it was angel food cake, then yeah. then there would be a real fight. Pound cake? Got you. Not my thing. I think I'm going ice cream and root beer here. 
Ooh, ice cream and root beer. I'm going with the soft serve and the Oreos, man. Okay. Well, right, chat, it's up to chat. It's on you. Chat, what do you got? Keep in mind, it's not real Oreos. It's Oreo cereal. I mean, I suppose but. you... So I already know that there's a vote for you because Emily said she does not like root beer. Right, so Wiggum uh, says oh yeah, root Wiggum beer. loves root beer. So we're going to be right down the aisle. I think we have to do a randomizer. Okay, so here, so I guess here's the question: Do either of these beat ice cream and brownie? Uh, not in my mind, no. So then I don't know that it matters. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just move ice cream and brownie to the final two. Okay, that's a fair. That's a fair idea. I like that. Because basically we'll say it's a tie, but ice cream and brownie would have beat either entrant. Yeah, that's fair. I should probably put ice cream brownie. Uh, all right, so we've got, what are you talking about? Apples and cheese move forward. Apples and cheese didn't even make the <laughs> second round. Cornbread uh, and honey moves forward and all of them still lose to ice cream and brownie. <laughs> all right, we've got yogurt and granola or the provolone and spicy cured deli meat of choice, man. I don't know. So just, just to close that gap, those two teams were diagnosed with COVID and they're no longer eligible for the tournament. So there ice you cream go. and brownie moves go. to the final two. <laughs> all right, so... I think we have to go with the spicy cured meat here. Yeah, I think I'm gonna agree. I think I'm gonna agree. This close though. Right. Provolone. Yep. Agree, Wiggum. Yep. Crackers and cheese, or this is tater tots, right? Tots. Yeah. Tots and tots. So then we got tots and ice cream and brownie, and I think ice cream and brownie wins. All right. So you're going with ice cream and brownie. Yep. What was the other one? What was the other one? Like I'm trying to have a. Well, the hummus, other one was hummus, was hummus and pita bread. I, I already told everybody that I've been thinking, I'm thinking dessert right now. So it's ice cream brownie. It's ice cream and brownie. All right. So oh. the winner of the dish bracket is ice cream and ice cream brownie. brownie. All right. So that is our random rankings for this week. We will have to pick this up in a couple weeks now. Chat. You can let us know we are going to have an episode next week, Friday, but I will not be live on that episode. So if you want uh, Christopher and I to pre-record us doing one of these, let us know. Otherwise, we'll pick this up in two weeks when I am back. Yeah, for sure. Let us know how you want to do it. Let's replace it. Um, next week for we random, what we're going to do is Brian's going to be out of town or he's going to be doing something that's less important than this but he scheduled over us i don't know why he did that but we're uh, we're gonna record in advance we're gonna record tomorrow actually um we're working around cigars and then uh and then i'll just basically what we're gonna do is next week i will play the video i'll still be here live so i'll be chatting with y'all and uh um and then we'll just play it we'll just play it live and just interact that way so wiggum says yes record a bracket okay all right, so next up we have the handful. <laughs> All right, there we go. We'll do the handful. I think we're good. B, are you ready to do right. your extra point? I am. I'm going to keep my extra point nice and uh, short here so you can use the time that you need. I was listening to a podcast today, and the podcaster said something interesting that I had actually never heard this phrase before, but I really like it. The phrase is, be a fountain, not a drain. Basically, that means to create more and consume less. So when you're a fountain, you're creating, you're giving people life, you're giving of yourself to others. When you're being a drain, you're sucking people's energy, you're sucking their ideas, you're taking things down in a way. And I think that's one of the things that we on this podcast, and I know that I personally try to do for other people. I try to give of myself and not take away from other people. So I think that was just a good reminder for me to continue to do the things that I try to do to be helpful and to be a fountain, not a drain. I like it. Plus, you know, if you're a drain, you get hair all stuck up in you and somebody has to and dump they, poison down you to get it out and yeah you gotta you gotta create a science experiment in your drain and put yeah. baking soda and vinegar down there which i may or may not have done today oh great <laughs> perfect that's why you came up with this 
Uh, totally isn't, but it was just a funny coincidence. That is a funny coincidence. Um, I'll be honest, I haven't thought about what my extra point's going to be this week. Um, but uh, what's been on my mind a lot lately, so I figure this is a as good a topic as any, um, positivity and positive outlook. And part of that is driven by the fact that, you know, I've had my own personal issues of late, um, health-wise and otherwise. In other ways, and otherwise, in other ways, whichever. Um, a lot of shit going down in the Sconzi world. And uh, it's very, very easy to get negative, to get depressed, to get down on myself. Um, to just, to let everything, you know, just, just to, the way that I picture this is, you know, I, I see me sitting on my couch. Cause that's kind of my, or my porch. It's my, my happy spot. And then I just see this, like this, uh, black kind of smoke that just kind of starts to fill me and then it just kind of seeps out to everything around me that's i'm a very visual person that's kind of what i see and that black is that that depression and that hatred and that disgust that i have for me and 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 the the anger i have on what's going on around me and it just starts to fill everything right so no matter where i look what do i see i see this disgusting mass of of hatred and and bother and worry and anger and, and all of that. Um, and that's, not, that's not a healthy place to be. So what I'm really trying to focus on, and this is this was always part of the 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 Sconzi brand and part of the podcast brand and all the stuff that I've done is to really look at that more positive approach. Um, I know that sometimes we come across sometimes as negative in the podcast, me particularly. Sometimes it's because I'm being negative, to be honest with that. But sometimes it is because we're, 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 we're pushing to try to make things better. I think I can do better on that. I want to do better on that. I also want to do better at just trying to clear that fucking smoke around me because it's not a healthy place for me to be. And as I already mentioned, my health isn't in a great spot as it is. So I need to, I need to make sure that I'm being, doing whatever I can to help with that and help clear that up. And I think it's an important thing for all of us to do is to be aware of where we are mentally, emotionally, um, how we're feeling, how we are letting things that are on the outside impact us, how we're letting the things on the inside of us impact the outside world, and really just being cognizant of that. And and beyond being cognizant, I think being cognizant is kind of step one. But the next step is how do you start to make some changes in that? How do you start to clear away in that in that you know that black smoke that's that's surrounding you? How do you how do you get sunlight into there? How do you project sunlight out? How do you how do you find a way to make things better for you and for the world around you? It's not always easy, um, but I think it's, it's something that I'm really focusing on. And I'm gonna use the opportunity here um, to kind of mention what I what I really want to do and what I'm planning to do is to do like a weekly vlog, video blog kind of thing on positivity. I haven't I haven't ironed out anything yet, but. I've got things that I want to speak to that I think are beneficial for other people. I know they'll be beneficial for me. And honestly, I'm going to be super selfish and say, that's what I'm doing it for is for me. And I'm hoping that other people will enjoy it as well. And that's really that same kind of thing, which is let's find the positivity. Let's share the positivity. Let's, let's make the world a better place because yeah, we can, you know, stand on the mountaintops and scream about some jackhole in Oklahoma who is a racist piece of shit. And we can yell from the, from the rooftops about some jackal in Georgia who's clearly a racist and has other fucking issues going on. He killed eight goddamn people for no reason. You know, there's all these fucking Ron Johnson. Don't get me started on that prick. You know, all these people that that we can just yell from the rooftops about how horrible they are. But I think we can go a step further, right? And and sometimes we do that here. Sometimes not as much as we need to. Um, But I think that's an important step too. So anyway, I, as always, took way too goddamn much time. But... uh, yeah, so that's what I that's what I would ask you to walk away with, Chad, is to take some time to reflect on yourself, where you're at, what's impacting you, what you're impacting, and how we can how we can make things better for ourselves and for everyone else. And hopefully, you'll join me for that vlog when I get around to publishing it. That's what I got, B. I'm just over here giggling because just to let you all in a little bit, and this is kind of our plan for the episode that we're going to record tomorrow. So we want to let you all in a little bit, but Skanzi and I had had a very specific conversation where it was said, but not said, B, 
don't talk about the fucking vlog. And then Skanzi <laughs> goes out and talks about the vlog. So wow. I'm very excited about it. But it was just funny <laughs> because we had a very specific conversation <laughs> that I was not to talk about the vlog like I did when I talked about the Patreon that was like in its final stages, but it wasn't like greenlit yet. Yeah, right. And I'm like, skanzi has got a Patreon. And everybody's like, oh, oh cool. But in any case, <laughs> well, this, at least this way I could set the stage by saying it's nowhere near close to ready. So it's going to be a while, but it's coming. So, you know, kind of just uh, an amuse bouche just to get you excited. It's true. So to let you all know where you can find us, if you want to give us some feedback, you can find us on Twitter. You can find me at Landmark MKE. You can find Skanzi at Skanzi. You can also find us at AQ underscore P-R-O-D. When we put out the podcast, we are starting to put out like a little minute or 90 second clip that we enjoy from this podcast. So be on the lookout for that. You can also find Skanzi on Patreon. You can find him streaming live on Twitch. You know, you got to update that little graphic you got there because Facebook is Uh-oh. no longer part of the program. That's but true. If you guys want to find us, please do. Thank you all for your patronage. Thank you all for listening, watching, and being our supporters. We love you. We appreciate you. And Christopher, if you don't have anything else to say, I'll tell him. We'll see you next week. All right. Take it easy, everybody. See you later. We did it, baby. We got 10 minutes.